Sullivan. For today's project, we're gonna turn this acoustic guitar into a high strung guitar. Essentially, we're gonna take the octave strings from a 12 string guitar, put them on this guitar, we'll adjust the neck, recarve the bridge saddle, and carve a new nut for it. Okay, our first step, once we have this guitar tuned to pitch, we wanna go through and take measurements to see where the action is right now. Uh, we're gonna measure the amount of relief in the neck, how high the strings are from the 12th fret, and the action at the nut, which is determined by the string height at the first fret. Okay, to measure the action on this guitar, we're gonna place the capo on top of the first fret. We're gonna hold the low E string down at the last fret, and we're gonna use our action gauge to measure exactly how much relief or bow is in the neck. And here we're looking at about, about 22 thousandths of relief. Next step, we're gonna measure the height of the strings at the 12th fret, measuring from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret. We're gonna look at each string and just, just see what the action looks like there. And on this guitar, it's about just a little over 6 64ths on the treble side. That graduates up to about 7 64ths on the bass side. Next step, we want to remove the capo and measure the string height at the first fret. And again, we're measuring from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret, just to see how much uh, how much room we've got there. And on this guitar, it looks like about 1 64th on the treble side, and that graduates up to about 2 64ths on the bass side. Now that we've taken our measurements, it's important to write this down so that you know exactly what your starting point is, and it'll help you decide where you want to go from there, if you want to raise the action, lower the action, or what needs to be adjusted. Next step, we need to remove the strings. Now we're going to pull the strings out of the bridge. A little trick that I learned is if you push the string down, the peg comes out a lot easier. Otherwise, you can sit here and pull and pull on the peg, and sometimes they just won't come out. So the next step with this, we're going to take a look at the bridge saddle. Um, the saddle would probably work, however, it won't intonate properly because of the way that it's carved. With a high strung, uh, the strings intonate completely different than your traditional acoustic guitar. So what I'm going to do is use this saddle as a template to carve a new saddle. And uh, with the new saddle, we'll be able to carve the intonation points and get them exactly right. Okay, before we start carving a saddle, there's a little information we need to know first. Number one, what is the radius of this fretboard? Is it, you know, how round is it? How flat is it? That'll give us a good idea of how to carve the top of the saddle to match the fingerboard, because that's really important. Uh, the tool I use for this is a uh, radius gauge that I got from Stuart McDonald. Uh, I've had this thing for decades, works great and you just place it on the uh, fretboard, right around the 12th fret, you know. And that gives you a good idea of exactly, you know, what the radius is, you know. On this one, of course, a 20, that's not gonna work. You know, see how, see how that just rocks back and forth. On this one, I think we're uh, definitely right at 14. It fits on there perfectly. So that's what we're going with. So now that I know what the correct radius is, what I'm gonna do is take this bridge saddle blank, it's just a bone blank, and I'm gonna put the old saddle up against it. And what I'm looking for here is really the length. I wanna make sure I carve the saddle to the proper length. 
Um, and I've already determined that the action on this guitar is just way too high. Uh, 664 by 7 is really kind of ridiculous, you know, unless you're playing slide. So I want to be able to set this up to play really easy. Um, so the first step is, you know, I've got the saddle marked. I marked it just slightly longer than what it is, just to give me a little bit of uh, room for mistakes. Next thing I'm going to do is take that blank in my radius gauge, and I'm going to lay the radius gauge on top of it like that so that I can mark exactly the correct radius. So that gives me a really good snapshot of what my saddle needs to look like before I start carving. Next step is I'm going to cut off a little bit of this excess using my bandsaw. And then once we do that, I'm going to sand the, uh, the shape of the top of the saddle on my belt sander just to get us roughed in so we have a good starting point. Okay, now that I've cut the end of this saddle off, you can see I took quite a big, quite a big chunk off of this. That's going to get us closer to the proper length that we need in order for this to fit into that, uh, that guitar. Next step, we're going to sand the top of the saddle down very, very close to the line uh, just to get us closer as far as the action goes. Now keep in mind, you can cut these ends off uh, with a hacksaw. You'd want to put the saddle blank into a vise, use a hacksaw, it'll come right off pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, that works out great if you don't have access to a bandsaw. Uh, but the next step, we're going to sand the top of this down on the belt sander, and then from there, start doing the fine cutting. Okay, now that we've got the top of the saddle sanded down close to where we want it, not exactly, but really close, uh, we're able to now shape the corners of this, the thickness of it, so that it fits perfectly into the bridge saddle slot. Keep in mind, you can do this by hand. Um, you could, a couple of different ways, you could put the saddle in a vise uh, using a file or uh, you know, like a really heavy grit sandpaper, like 80 grit, 60 grit, to say on the top of it. You just gotta make sure that you follow that line, that radius line. Uh, you don't wanna flatten it out in the middle because the action's gonna be all messed up and the guitar won't play right. Okay, now that we've got the uh, top of the saddle, what I call roughed in, what we wanna do is sand this to where it perfectly matches the radius of that line um, exactly. The best way to do that, since we've determined this is what a, uh, 14 inch radius. I'm using a sanding block that's actually carved out to be exactly a 14 inch radius with some self adhesive sandpaper on it. Uh, so what I do is put that in my vise, get in there nice and tight, and then I'm going to set the saddle squared up on top of that radius block and I'm going to gently sand it back and forth, periodically checking it to see if I can still see the line. And what I want to do is sand that to where that line is almost completely gone. Now it's very important that you keep this squared up at a 90 degree angle to this block. You don't want to be tilting this way or that way because that's, that's going to uh, change the action in a negative way and you'll, you'll just have to recarve another saddle. It's important to keep even pressure. You don't want to push too much on this end or this end. You want to keep the pressure relatively even. You don't have to press hard. Let the tool do all the work. You're just moving the saddle back and forth so that you can remove exactly the right amount of material. And that looks pretty good right there. Now that we have the radius correct, the trick now is to get the thickness of the saddle to match the saddle slot. So you don't want the uh, saddle too loose towards it's rocking back and forth, but you don't want it so tight that you have to really force it down in there. That could actually crack the bridge. So what we're gonna do now is sand this to the proper thickness so it drops right in. So here I'm just using glass blocks that I have uh, self-adhesive sandpaper on. 
And what you want to do is hold the saddle down completely flat. You don't want to put too much pressure on one side this way or this way. You want to keep it relatively flat and with gentle strokes going in one direction. You don't want to come back and forth. You want to go in one direction. Reason being is if you push it this way and then drag it back, you're going to take more material off this side than this side. And so as you go back and forth, you're going to end up with it really thick in the middle and it's going to be loose on the ends. You don't want that. So just take it slow. There's no rush. So you do a few strokes and then check it inside the slot to see, see how close you are. And we still have a little ways to go. You can kind of fit it in there, but that's not going to work. So let's take a little more material off. Yeah, that's pretty good there. It's still a little on the tight side. So I'm going to flip my glass plate over. Uh, this side is 80 grit, pretty aggressive stuff. This side, I've got 400 grit, not quite as bad. So it'll kind of put a little bit of a polish, I guess you could say, on the saddle. Sand out those, uh, the deep grooves left by the 80 grit. And see there, that's how you want it to fit just like that. So it's not going to rock back and forth, but you don't have to force it in. Notice how the saddle slot is rounded at the ends. It's that way on both sides. So we've got to carve the saddle to match the saddle slot to where it has that nice rounded edge and fits perfectly in. Okay, so now we're going to round the edges of the saddle so it fits in that slot properly. The technique I use is using, again, my glass block with the 80 grit sandpaper. And you want to keep this squared up onto that at a little bit of an angle. And you want to roll the saddle away from you very, very gently. But you can see how it's starting to round that edge just a little bit. So now I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And again, You're sanding away from yourself, just like if you were whittling. Now that I've got it relatively close, I want to flip over to the other side where I'm using 400 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to lay this out a little flatter than what I did before and gently roll it just to taper it in just a little bit on each side. So there's not such a uh, stark transition. Okay, so that looks about right. Now we're going to place it inside the saddle slot and see how clean our fit is. Okay, now that I've got this end perfectly fitted inside the saddle slot, this side of the saddle is still just a little bit too long. So what I want to do is mark the end of this saddle so I know exactly how much to take off of this end. Then we can start rounding this to get it to fit in perfectly. And again, I left a little extra there just in case. You know, sometimes it takes several tries to get this, uh, to get this curve to match perfectly to the slot. And every time you go to sand a little bit more, you remove more material. So it's better to err on the side of caution and have to go back and re-sand a few times because uh, you can't put it back. Okay, you can see this side's rounded. I got that fitted very, very well into the bridge. This is the excess right here on the saddle. It's just a little bit too long. So I'm gonna take this material off and then start rounding the end of that so it'll fit on the treble side. So first I'm gonna take off this little extra amount of material here. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna start rounding. So I'm gonna use the 80 grit side again. I'm gonna square the saddle up and sanding in one direction. I'm going to take it down to that line. Now it's important to check it after every couple of swipes uh, because you don't want to take too much off of one end or this side or that side or you know you want to make sure it's squared up so that when you go to round it it'll fit perfectly in the slot and it's not going to look weird.
Okay, now that we've recarved the saddle, we've got the corners rounded perfectly. We got the thickness sanded exactly the way we want it. And we've got the top of the saddle carved to the correct radius. So now we're gonna check the fit. And notice how it's in there snug, but not too tight. And it doesn't slide back and forth. So we know we got the uh, rounded edges carved correctly. Um, that's exactly what we're looking for. Now the next step is we've got to decide on how tall the saddle needs to be to fit the action that we want to set this up at. Okay, now in looking at the saddles, I'm going to compare the old saddle to the new saddle that we're carving. And uh, height-wise, they're pretty close. I think the new saddle might be slightly, just slightly taller, but we're talking a minimal amount. Um, we've determined that the action on this guitar was way too high. Uh, it was 664 by 764 uh, at the 12th fret, measuring from the uh, bottom of the string to the top of the fret. And uh, that's pretty ridiculous. So we want to go more towards uh, 464 on the treble side, 564 on the bass side. So we know we're going to have to take at least a 32nd of an inch off the bottom of the uh, new saddle to get it closer to the action we want. Okay, now we're gonna sand this extra material off the bottom of the saddle. Again, we're using 80 grit sandpaper. And as always, it's very important you go one direction. You don't wanna tilt the saddle this way or this way too much, which is another reason why we marked both sides so that we can tell if we're not squared up properly. Or if we're taking too much material off this side versus this side, uh, all the way around, really. Let's take a closer look at what we've done. You'll see the original saddle. Notice how it's quite a bit taller than what our new saddle's gonna be. So we're able to carve the bottom of the saddle down and the action should be really good on this once we, uh, once we get this installed. So where we are with the process at this point, we've got the saddle carved for the most part, but it's not intonated yet. Now keep in mind, because we're doing a high strung set, it's all plain strings except for the sixth. So they're gonna intonate completely differently than your typical acoustic guitar. Um, so what I wanna do before we start getting into intonating this, is put just a light bevel on the back side of the saddle because we need to string this thing up with the correct gauge of string. And we don't want a sharp edge on the back of the saddle because that'll cause the strings to kink and bind uh, and potentially break. So I just want to put a nice, gentle, little rounded edge on it because our next step before we intonate this is to carve a new string nut. And we really can't carve the string nut until we've uh, got it strung up with the proper strings. Now, you don't have to go buy a 12 string set, break it up, and end up you know, wasting a bunch of strings. A lot of manufacturers like Daddario and several others do have a high strung set with all the proper gauges and of course, as you can see on this one, it goes from a, a 10 to a 14, 9, 12, 18. Those are the plain strings, and then it has a wound 27 uh, in a phosphor bronze. Okay, to recap where we're at, we've carved a new bridge saddle out of bone and we've got it to fitting perfectly in the saddle slot. I put a very gentle bevel on the back side of the saddle so that we don't have a sharp angle there for when we put the strings on it. Next, we're gonna remove the old string nut because that's carved for a typical acoustic set of strings. We're gonna remove that and we're gonna carve this bone blank to be the new string nut. And then that way we can get the uh, height of the string correct, the angle, but more importantly, the width of each slot 
so that it matches the high strung set of strings we're gonna be using. Now to remove the string nut, I'm gonna use a uh, flathead screwdriver and a small hammer and just very gently tap the nut so it pops right out. Now you don't wanna hit it too hard because uh, you really don't wanna break this, but also more importantly, you don't wanna bust up the inside of the uh, fingerboard or the uh, neck itself. So just a couple of gentle taps and they usually come right out. Okay, now that we've removed the old string nut, we need to look at the slot here and you'll notice there's still a lot of glue in there uh, from when this was glued in originally. So we wanna clean this out using a uh, small chisel and uh, get that nice and smooth because we want a squared edge there for the new nut so it'll fit in there perfectly. Now also, you'll notice this nut is quite a bit wider than what the slot is. So once we get this glue cleaned off, we'll know exactly how much material to take off the, uh, the new nut so we'll get it to fit in there perfectly. So I'm just gonna use my chisel to very gently clean off that glue. Because remember, we don't want to remove any material off the fingerboard. We just want to clean the glue off. So it's a little bit of it's a little bit of a bigger chisel here. And because this is end grain here at the end of the fingerboard, chances are you're not gonna you know, end up cutting a lot of material off of the fingerboard. But you do want to go slow, be gentle. Um, there's no rush. So want to make sure you get a nice clean surface. Now that I've got the glue cleaned off the end of the fingerboard and got it squared up, we're ready to fit this new piece of bone into the slot to make sure that uh, it has a really good, nice, clean, tight fit. And you'll notice, again, you know, the slot ends here, so we've got a fair amount of material we're gonna have to take off the back of this, uh, this blank. So I measured out a little bit of uh, pencil graphite here. I'm just gonna kind of mark this so that we see, can see exactly how much material to take off of the nut so we don't take too much off. So a little trick to that is you get this measured out to the proper distance. So we know we're gonna sand this down to the end of the line. I'm gonna mark the back side of this just a little bit, just as a guide on this side. So now we know how much to sand off the back side of this nut so that it'll drop right into the slot and have a nice tight, snug fit. Okay, so again, we're gonna sand this using 80 grit paper on our glass block. And again, we're sanding the back side of this string nut, and we're gonna take it down to the edge of this line that I've drawn onto the blank. And again, we just go one direction. And again, you wanna keep even pressure and try to keep it as squared up as possible. Okay, that looks pretty even. Now we're gonna check and see if it fits in the slot. So as you can see here, it almost fits in there. It's just slightly too thick, just a little bit. Um, and since we've sanded it with the 80 grit, I think now I'm gonna sand it with a lighter grit paper, like 400, uh, just so that we don't take too much material off, but it'll have a, a little more of a polished look. At this point, we're, we're looking at thousandths of an inch, I mean, tiniest, tiniest amount. And I'm using 400 grit paper so that we don't take too much material off. Now that we've trimmed the string nut down, I'm gonna check the fit. And we've got it to where it fits nice and tight, squared up very well with the bottom of the slot and the end of the fingerboard. Uh, it's not too tight, but it's not too loose fits just perfectly. Of course, you notice on this that the this 
nut blank is quite a bit too long. So what we're going to do is mark the edges of it using our mechanical pencil here. And we're going to trim off the excess. So as you can see, there's a fair amount of material we're going to have to take off the edge of this string nut just to make sure that it matches this angle here, but also the curvature of the end of the uh, fretboard because we want to have that nice smooth transition between the fingerboard and the string nut. We're trimming the edges of the string nut and after every pass or two, you want to take a look at it and see how much material you're taking off. Make sure you don't take too much off or make sure this angle is correct. Okay, now we're going to clean it up a little bit with the 400 grit paper. Kind of give it a little bit of a polished look on the side. Looks like it might work. So we're going to check the fit and see if we need to take a little bit more off or if it's perfect. Okay, so I've trimmed off the edge of this string nut blank. So I'll gently tap it into place. And what I'm looking for here is a very smooth transition so that I can't really feel where the string nut begins in the uh, fingerboard or the neck end. I want a nice smooth transition there. And that feels pretty good right there. So the next step is we're gonna mark the other side, treble side, and get that trimmed up. Okay, so now I'm gonna mark the edge of this right where it meets the fingerboard and the neck. And you see quite a bit of material we're going to have to remove from this. So as you can see, I've trimmed the edges of the string nut so it fits perfectly into the neck uh, to where you can't feel the transition between the fingerboard, the string nut, and the rest of the neck. So the next step is we're going to mark the string nut using a six inch ruler and a mechanical pencil. And what I do is I just lay the ruler on top of the frets and mark the edge of the string nut very gently back and forth. And that shows me exactly how much material to take off the top of the string nut so that we can start carving the slots for the strings. Okay, now that we've got the string nut marked, we know exactly how much material to take off the top of it. And as we did before with the saddle, we're gonna use a 14 inch radius block to sand that material off and make sure we maintain the proper radius. So we're just gonna sand it back and forth take off the material to get it to match the fingerboard. Another technique I use, once I got it down to about the right height, <clears throat> I want to maintain that nice curvature on the back of the string nut. So I roll it towards me to where the, the blank is somewhat flat and not exactly flat up against this, and then roll it towards me to create that nice, smooth, rounded edge. Okay, now that we've got the top of this sanded to the proper radius, we want to get rid of this sharp edge here at the end. So the way we do that is we, uh, using the 80 grit paper again, and I'm gonna set the blanket a little bit of an angle and just roll it like this. 
and see how that starting to smooth off that edge a little bit so it's not quite so sharp. There we go. And I'm just going to repeat the same process on this end. Okay, now that we've got the, uh, the corners knocked off a little bit, kind of sanded and rounded, it's still a little bit rough, so I'm going to hit it with some 400. Kind of smooth off that edge a little bit so it's not so rough. Okay, now that we've smoothed off the edges of the corners, we've got it nice and rounded. We've got a nice consistent shape that'll fit very, very well on this guitar neck to where we won't feel the transition you know, between the fingerboard and the uh, string nut itself. Now we're going to put this back into the neck and cut the slots for each string. Okay, so before we start cutting the string slots, what I want to do is secure the string nuts. I'm going to use just a little drop of super glue at the end of the fingerboard. And then I'm going to use a Q-tip to clean up any excess, just like that. It only takes a few seconds to dry. And then we'll be able to mark the placement for each string. And then from there, start carving. Okay, now we're going to mark the string spacing. So we're going to start with the two E strings. So on the base side, we're going to mark in from the edge of the fretboard, we're going to move in about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to make the uh, little pencil mark there the same width as what the string is. And we're going to come over to the treble side and do the same thing. And again, we're measuring from the edge of the fretboard About a quarter of an inch in. And again, this is why you measure over and over again to make sure you get it right. So we've got those two marked. Next, we're going to cut a little notch for each one. Don't want to go too deep, just enough to hold the string and then measure again. And we'll leave enough height so that if we do make a mistake and we need to move it in a little bit or move it out, no problem. Okay, now we're going to cut the notch for the sixth string, which is a 27 as opposed to a standard acoustic, which would be either a 52 or even up to a 56. So we're just going to put a small little notch in it. Now, it's important when you're carving a nut to make sure that you're following the angle of the string and make sure you don't carve it out too far because you don't want to put any more pressure on the string nut than you have to. So you want to get the angle correct, the width correct, and the spacing. So now that we've got the low E done, we're going to do the high E, and that's a 10 gauge string. I'm just going to set the file right on top of that line very gently carve a little notch in it and that should do it now we're going to wind those strings on and then check the spacing again okay so you can see here that the measurement from the outside edge of the string to the edge of the fingerboard is right at a quarter of an inch on both sides so we've got the two E's exactly where we want them. The next trick is to figure out the spacing in between for the rest of the strings. So we're going to go through and measure these out. And because these strings are much thinner than a traditional acoustic, the spacing actually will be wider than a traditional acoustic. So we're going to come out about 9.30 seconds. Again, you want to make your mark approximately the same thickness as the string that's going to go in each slot. 
I'm going to start with the outside strings and work my way in. And again, we're approximately 9.30 seconds for each string. Some are going to be a little bit thicker. Um, some will be very, very thin. Uh, you know, the string gauges we're using here, we've got a, a 10. From there, we go to a 14. Then we drop down to a 9. And then we go up to a 12. And then the next string is going to be an 18. And then, of course, the last one is a 27. So now that we've got this mapped out just a little bit, we're ready to start cutting the uh, slots. And again, we're not going to go deep. We're just going to, just enough to hold the string to make sure that when we measure, we have room to move in or out, you know, whichever direction, to make sure the spacing is exactly correct. So this next string is a 14. So I'm going to gently cut the slot, just like so. And then I'm going to come back to the A string. And again, make sure you get the angle of the string correct, because it's going to this post. So that angle's got to be correct. Just put a little notch in it, not much. <clears throat> then we're going to go back to the um, G, which is a 9. Put a little notch in that. And then finally, drop over to the D string, which is a 12. And you'll notice each string is actually at a different angle, this direction and even this direction. So you want to make sure you do this to the proper angle and spacing and width. Okay, so I'm winding the strings on. Once I've got those all installed, um, even before I tune it to pitch, I'm going to go through and remeasure and make sure the spacing is correct in between each string. Um, and again, we left this each slot just real shallow. So that'll give us room if we need to cut our angles and, you know, towards the neck, away or towards the end of the fretboard or away from it, just to make sure our string spacing is as perfect as possible. And what we're measuring for really is we want to see if the strings are consistent from the outside diameter of one string to the outside diameter of another string. That way they'll be an exact distance apart. Otherwise, with the thicker strings, they would get more crowded as you get towards the base side, and it just it wouldn't be very comfortable. Whereas the thinner strings would be much further apart if we measured from the center point of the string as opposed to the outside diameter. So what I see here is this B string needs to go towards the E string just a little bit because we're a little wide there. And of course, between the G and the B, we're definitely narrow. So I want to move this over towards the E string a little bit and widen the spacing out. So as I cut this, I'm going to cut a, a bit of a sharp angle going this direction to move that slot over. And then I'm going to roll my file a little bit. And let's see how that does. Almost there. Just needs to go over just a just a skosh more. Okay, that's dead on. It's right where we want it. 9.30 seconds. So let's move over here and see how good we are here. So what I'm seeing here is the D string should move over just a, just a skosh. So I'm going to move that one over just a little bit. 
looks good. Okay, now that we have the string spacing correct, the next step is we're gonna tune this up to pitch. We're gonna take a look and see how much relief we have in the necks if we need to adjust the truss rod at all. From there, we're gonna measure the action at the 12th fret to see if uh, the saddle's too tall or too short. Once we have that corrected, then we're gonna be ready to cut the depth of each string slot now that we have the spacing correct. And from there, the last step would be setting the intonation, and then we're good to go. Now remember, when you're tuning this, it does tune differently than a traditional guitar. The E and B on the high side, of course, it's the same, same as any acoustic guitar, but the G jumps up an entire octave. Same thing with the D, the A, and the low E. Okay, now that we've got this high strung tune to pitch. I'm gonna take a look at the uh, relief in the neck. So I've got a capo on top of the first fret. I'm holding down the E string at the last fret. And using my action gauge, I'm looking at the distance between the top of the frets and the bottom of the string. And what I'm looking for is the greatest distance throughout the entire length of the neck. And it's about right here. And we're looking at about 12 thousandths of relief, which is perfect. Next, I'm gonna measure the action at the 12th fret to see if we need to raise or lower the action. And here we've got four, and it graduates up to five sixty-fourths. That's actually perfect. That way, you know, you can play even a little more aggressively if needed. You could use a capo, but it won't buzz. So we've got the relief perfect. We've got the action perfect at the 12th fret. Next step, we're gonna take this capo off and we're gonna measure down here at the first fret to see if the nut slots need to come down. And they absolutely do. So our slots are still pretty high. We've got about 3 64ths and pretty consistently across the board here. So what we wanna do is we wanna lower the treble strings, especially the high E down to about 1 64th of an inch above the first fret. That's gonna graduate up to 2 64ths by the time we get to the, uh, to the east, low E string. It's important to remember when you're cutting the slot down, you don't wanna to put too much pressure on the file because you could easily break it. Uh, let the tool do all the work. You just want to do a few passes. Tune it back up and then measure. And it went from 364 down to two. So we just have a little more cutting to do. And it's also a good idea to check the spacing again after every cut, just to make sure you're not going in the wrong direction. Okay, so you can see here, we've got exactly 1 64th of an inch from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. It's exactly where we wanna be. Okay, now we're moving on to the B string. And it's exactly the same process. I'm gonna cut the depth. Make sure that the angle, the width, and the spacing are all correct. Just do a few passes. Okay, so so far, we've cut the slots for each one of the strings to the proper thickness, the angle, and the spacing. So now, we're working on that very last string, the sixth string. Let's measure our height. We're dead on at 2 64ths. So it looks great. Let's check the spacing one last time. Perfect. Okay. Now we've got the height cut down perfectly for each string. So we're at 
two sixty fourths here at the uh, low E, and of course the high E we have set at one sixty fourth. So now that we've got that process done, next step is to recarve the saddle and adjust the intonation. So I'm tuning the E string, the sixth string, and checking the intonation. And as you can hear, that's quite flat. So what that means is the point of contact for this string on the saddle needs to be moved forward towards the neck. So I'm going to loosen the string. And pull it out. I put a little mark in between the two strings so that I know so that I don't cut over too far this direction. I want to keep all these uh, all these strings at an equal distance as far as the notches that I cut for each string because each one is going to be at a different location on the saddle. So I want to make sure it looks consistent and uniform. Okay, here's what I'm talking about as far as marking the saddle in between each string. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is cutting or carving a different point of contact for each string. So to keep it consistent, I want to make sure that I don't uh, carve this angle too wide over into this space, and so on and so forth. So I want to keep it real consistent and uh, clean looking. So we know that the low E is definitely flat, and the point of contact was about right here. So I'm going to carve that saddle forward to about right there, so that we have a nice even point of contact. So what we're doing here is we're carving the angle of the string to the correct intonation point. Now it's very important when you're carving this angle that the string is at one angle. You don't want to end up uh, carving this saddle point, you know, too steep or too shallow. You want it to match the angle that the string is going to follow as it comes out of the bridge. So I'm just going to check and see where that point of contact is and you can see it's a little further back than what I want it. I want it up here and we're hitting back here so I'm going to continue carving until I get it to exactly where I want it. Okay. That's about perfect. So now we're going to put the string back on, tune it up to pitch, and check it. It's awfully close, awfully close. We still need to advance that point of contact towards the neck just a little bit, just a hair, to get this dead on. <sighs> so that's pretty well dead on right there. So now that we've got this string intonated, I'm going to file a little bit off of the front side of that saddle to that point of contact and then we're going to move on to you know the A string and so on and so forth and get each and every string completely dead on in tune. Okay, so now we have the intonation adjusted so that each string plays very well in tune. And you'll notice that I advanced the uh, E string pretty far forward. But the A string, that moved back significantly. And then we've got the D and G, which were somewhere in between. The B string, which moved back significantly, and the high E string. But by carving each angle and point of contact to the right location, the guitar will balance very well in tune. So one of the finishing touches, once I completed everything on the setup of this guitar, is to go through and polish out the uh, string nut and the bridge saddle. 
kind of gives it a nice shine, keeps it nice and smooth. Then I add little pencil marks inside each of these slots for the nut. That'll keep the string from sticking too much uh, while you're tuning. Well, our high strung conversion is now complete. Essentially what we've done is we adjusted the neck, carved a brand new bridge saddle for it, carved a new string nut, compensated the saddle so that each string plays more in tune, tuned it up and it's ready to go.